Okay, thank you. My name is Søren Johansson. I'm from KIT, and um, I'm talking about a bit exotic uh, trace gases and uh, and aerosols here, so ammonia and ammonium nitrate in the upper troposphere. And I will show you results from two different campaigns with our Gloria infrared limb imager, uh, one from the Asian monsoon, the other one from biomass burning plumes above the South Atlantic. I will also want to acknowledge my co-authors, and uh, there's a much larger team at uh, KRT and Jülich who were developing and operating Gloria, so it's a big team effort. Um, you can see that uh, we have a very nice research aircraft um, from German research institutes called HALO, and Gloria instrument is uh, sitting in the belly part. It's quite a big instrument, so it needs some space there. I'm um, looking out to the right side of the direction of the flight, and um, yeah, I will talk a bit more about the instrument in a minute. So first of all, why do we care about ammonia? Ammonia is uh, the major alkyne species in the troposphere. It's part of reactive nitrogen. Sources are mainly agriculture, so livestock and fertilizers. Um, industry, combustion is an increasing source, and biomass burning, which is also one part of um, this talk here. Sinks are mainly washed out because it's wa very water soluble, and aerosol formation where ammonium nitrate comes into play. Measurements in the upper troposphere are so far only possible with infrared limb sounding. It's been shown by, for example, Hefner et al. Um, in the um, Asian summer monsoon upper troposphere that we have there a lot of um, ammonia. It's still unclear how this very water soluble uh, species is transported to the upper troposphere. There have been some, um, some ideas, but it's uh, not solved yet. So the instrument we are using is the Gimbal Limp Observer for Radiance Imaging of the Atmosphere, which has a very nice acronym GLORIA. Um, it's basically a Fourier transform um, spectrometer, which is cooled to get rid of um, uh, thermal noise, combined with an imaging detector, which allows us to record a lot of interferograms at the same time. You've seen it um, in Wolfgang's talk yesterday. Um, so we have a big advantage of, of a very of, of a lot of um, samples in one measurement. Um, main concept of the instrument is uh, it has a spectrometer in the, in the center here, has a gimbal frame to compensate for aircraft movements, um, so we want to know where we are looking at, and also allows for the active line of sight control. We know there is a f will be a feature in the atmosphere, we want to look at it in a certain angle, we can um, use that, or um, the colleagues from Jülich also use it for tomography. And we have two external black bodies um, for in-flight calibration. Um, I don't need to introduce limp geometry, which is nice here. Um, this slide is also, uh, was also, did also show up in Wolfgang's talk yesterday, but I want to summarize a bit our data processing. So we're taking measurements about every 13 seconds. I'm talking here about the high spectral resolution mode. Um, we're taking a lot of interferograms at the same time and um, processing then, doing level one processing to get one spectra in the infrared per, um, per row, per pixel row. So we're also doing some binning. And then from this set of, uh, of spectra, do our level two our retrieval to get um, a nice uh, profile. Here's an example, water vapor. Um, and we then typically put these profiles here together to get these nice curtain plots with on the x-axis, uh, the time of the measurement, or which is co correlates to the aircraft position and um, some altitude information. Here it's pressure. Later on, I will use altitude. I will compare um, our Gloria measurements to CAMS data. And CAMS has been mentioned several times this morning. Um, I want to be a, bit, be a bit more specific which CAMS data. So basically, it's two different data sets. One, the reanalysis, which, as the name says, is the same model setup for all the years, has a decent re uh, horizontal resolution. Um, every three hours we have output, and which is important for the biomass burning. It has the GFAS biomass burning emissions. And um, in a, another paper we showed that PAN, which is a typical uh, tracer for biomass burning, agrees reasonably well with Gloria measurements. So the biomass burning emissions in, in um, CAM seem to be very good, and also the transport. There's another product of uh, forecast, which is not the same for all the time. It receives regularly updates in the, in the model or in the chemistry. 
So it's also two different versions for the years 2017 and 19, the two years I'm looking at with our campaigns, and has a higher resolution. And as it's a forecast, it's initialized every um, 0 and 12 UTC. And then um, I'm using output from the uh, initialization every three hours. Same emissions, but for 2019, it's an upgrade. Uh, it's also emission heights are used from this inventory. And um, for ammonia, it's also important that ammonium and nitrate aerosol species are introduced in 2019. So we could maybe expect some improvements regarding ammonia and ammonium nitrate there. So first, uh, the Asian monsoon. Um, that's a campaign in 2017. Um, the Stratagem campaign, uh, we had uh, the Geophysica aircraft uh, which, uh, with which we were able to fly over 20 kilometers altitude. I'm showing here data from two flights, one over Nepal, back and forth basically, um, the other one going to the center of India and, and back. So here's the flight over Nepal, just a uh, um, part of it where we were not limited by clouds, so maybe I should explain this as well. Here's again the time on the x-axis when the measurement was taken. And sometimes we are limited here by clouds. You can see that our profiles don't go below 12 kilometers or so. Um, so we don't have data there. And some other gaps are sometimes mainly due to um, calibration measurements. Here you can directly see a very large plume, more than 1,000 ppt uh, of ammonia, which no one expected to be in the upper troposphere here at uh, 14 kilometers altitude. For the second flight, we also saw um, a very distinct plume here, up to 1,000 ppt, um, and even a minor plume, which you hardly can see in this color bar, but still it's, it's quite a lot. So from satellite measurements, we expected something like 30 ppt. Now we are 1,400 here in this case. Um, it's not necessarily correlated with uh, other pollutants. So here's PAN, um, typical tracer for pollution, uh, for example, from biomass burning. This plume is clearly correlated. But well, in this flight, there are other marks here in, in PAN, but it's not really correlated. So not necessarily correlated, I would say. Um, solid ammonium nitrate is also something we can measure with Gloria. Um, here you can see um, that we have a layer just below the uh, 380 k isentrope um, and here as well, so around the tropopause, which we think is the ETA layer or part of the ETA layer. And uh, for this flight, you can very well see how this uh, ammonia plume is uh, surrounded by ammonium nitrate. So you can see how um, it looks like that um, it slowly is processed towards ammonium nitrate here. How does it look like in the model? Um, so first, in comparison to CAMS reanalysis, I did sample CAMS model um, on the Gloria Tangent points. Um, so it should be a good uh, match in position. Um, and it looks, doesn't look that bad, I would say. Now, of course, there, here's a plume in CAMS reanalysis. It's a bit dislocated, I would say. But uh, the Asian monsoon is a very challenging region to model. Um, I mean, we are here in the troposphere with a lot of um, uh, things going on, a lot of convection. Um, so I was not, I was surprised how good this, this really matches. And same here, you see a plume, maybe it's uh, maximum is a bit below uh, the cloud top, um, which we didn't measure, but still we see the enhancements somehow at the right position. For um, the forecast uh, data set, which has a higher resolution, I would say it's even better this plume and this one as well. We have some other um, enhancements here, which we did not measure but still I'm, I'm quite satisfied with this comparison. So now to the second part, um, another campaign in 2019, we did the South Track campaign from South America and we had uh, three very nice transfer flights uh, from Cape Verde to Buenos Aires. All three are the same flight tracks basically, so they're all laying above each other. Um, and one time we were measuring in the one direction, two times in the other direction. And uh, we saw a lot of um, biomass burning here. So here's again PAN. And on all of these flights, uh, you see a lot of patches with very en enhanced values of PAN. Um, here's a very big um, plume. Same here. And here's a bit more patchy structure, which is also interesting. We could show that these parts, for example, come from Africa. The other ones, rather from South America. I mean, you can look at, at the paper if you want to um, get learn more about that. 
now. I want to go next. Yeah. We also looked uh, at ammonia because it was uh, measured in, in fresh plumes that also a lot of ammonia is in biomass burning. So we would expect something there. But we really don't. So the color bar I changed um, from 1000 to 100 here. So what we here see is basically noise. So no enhancements um, at all here in biomass burning. Seems like that um, the ammonia has been washed out during transport. Maybe the emittance wasn't uh, as much as, as for the fires people measured close to. Um, we don't know. How does it look like for ammonium nitrate? Well, maybe there is something. It looks very patchy here, but it's already average data. So um, if we average a lot, we can maybe um, see this big plume here also in ammonium nitrate. But again, the color bar has changed significantly. Before it was up to one, uh, 0 0.7 uh, micrograms per cubic meter. Now we're up to 0 0.1 micrograms per cubic meter. So if there's something uh, just a tiny little bit compared to the Asian monsoon. And now we're looking at the model. Just, uh, just an alert, I, I changed the color bar again. <laughs> um, you will see in a minute why. Now we're up to 500 PPTs in ammonia. So that's why you really see nothing here. And um, here, just for recognizing the biomass burning plumes in our measurements, again, the PAN measurements in the bottom row. For the reanalysis, we see a lot where no um, ammonia has been measured. So um, here, these, these uh, patches resemble a lot to, to the PAN um, enhancements in the measurement. Also, this uh, shape, you can, um, nose like structure, you can guess that is uh, matching quite well the pan and, and similar here. So it seems like the model transports a lot of ammonia up there and, and it remains there. So it's same uh, for forecast but different. Um, the intensities changed quite dramatically for example for this flight but still this is much much. We would see that uh, these enhancements in Gloria we are sensitive to that. So I'm already at the conclusions. Um, so we have CAM simulations, they agree quite well with uh, Gloria measurements of ammonia in, within the Asian monsoon. In biomass burning plumes it's a different story. Um, we don't measure any ammonia at all, but in all CAM simulations there is um, ammonia um, simulated. We have a, have a very clear signal of ammonium nitrate in the Asian monsoon, but only very slight enhancements in the biomass burning plumes. So question about the mismatch between um, Camps and uh, Gloria in um, biomass burning. So maybe there's a transport process for ammonia, which is only valid in the Asian monsoon, but not for biomass burning. Could be possible. Or maybe the sources are just of different quality. So for example, that the agricultural sources, which we would assume for the um, Asian monsoon, are better reflected in the model than the biomass burning sources. We're also very much looking forward to further measurements. Um, so some outlook here. Here's a timeline of all the campaigns we did with Gloria or Gloria related um, um, instruments. So first flight in 2011, which was mainly a technical flight. Um, the campaign I was talking about were here in Stratoclim on Geophysica and the South Track campaign on, on the German Halo research aircraft. We had our first uh, balloon flight in 2021. Gerhard will talk about this on Friday. Um, last year we had a nice balloon flight. This year we have a campaign from Oberpfaffenhofen in Germany and Anchorage looking at monsoon outflow. So I'm also very much looking forward to measure ammonia there, Hopefully, maybe ammonia over there. And uh, next year we have a first flight of a new uh, Gloria-like instrument, it's called Gloria Light. Our old instrument was quite big uh, and heavy. Now we uh, um, have shrinking it quite a lot with some, um, we have some increased noise, but we can handle that. And we will do a flight over several days from northern Sweden to, um, to Canada. And also some further campaigns planned in the future. And of course, we're looking very much forward or hoping to um, have uh, the CAT satellite um, um, in the beginning of the next century. We're lo very much looking forward to this and hope for the best, um, which of course would give us a lot of more um, opportunities to measure ammonium and ammonium nitrate. Thank you. Thank you.